I've noticed a lack of tutorials on how to make decent looking fairly large maps in Godot. So, I thought I would show my own little process. It's not perfect and you can't make Grand Theft Auto 5 or Skyrim size maps using this technique, but you can at least create a map that looks good and has detailed areas and will still be quite large. Also, this is not a tutorial just a brief overview of how I make maps and this can be applied to any game engine not just Godot. So first off, if it isn't obvious already, I'm using Blender to create my maps and import them into Godot. But, as you can see there is a bit more to it than that. This isn't just some boring gray scene. To get started create a new blender scene delete everything and go into the render settings and check the ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and set the shadow quality to the highest settings. Next, go ahead and add a directional light to the scene. Now go into world settings and make the color and environment texture. I have a folder of HDRI textures that I downloaded for free on websites like Polyhaven. There are even websites now that create AI generated HDRI images for you. Of course, you can make your own using Blender as well. Lately, I can't use Blender without a nice background. Now go to Add Mesh Landscape. If landscape doesn't appear you have to go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and then type a, then a period. Then, and landscape should be the first result and click to enable it. I'm not going over all of the settings the landscape mesh has. You will have to experiment with it, but there aren't that many settings. For me, this is just a starting point that I will use the sculpt tools to shape to my liking. There are other alternatives to this mesh. You can add a displacement modifier and apply a noise texture or a height map generated from another terrain software like Terra Sculptor 2, which is free. Next comes the most difficult but also the most important part of the setup. The terrain material. What's great about this though is that once you've made your terrain material you can use and easily modify it on all future terrains. I saved a Blender file called Terrain Template and I can just create a copy of that file whenever I want to make a new terrain to save a lot of time. With this I can rapidly make as many maps as I want for my game. I'm not going to go over every node in my material, but basically I'm taking the height and normals of my mesh to factor where to apply the riverbed, mountain, and snow textures, then taking those values as the RGBs of a new texture which I will import into Godot along with my terrain. I would strongly recommend you to get familiar with visual shaders if you haven't done so already. All I have to do is drag this output to the albedo and then I can bake the color in cycles and I'm ready to export to Godot. I have it set up to bake a 4K texture so it would take a few minutes. All it takes to do this is the vertical height and the Z normal. If the Z normal is 1, that means it is pointing up. So if it is a low value that's how we know the cliff texture should be applied there. There is no magic setup that works perfectly, you kind of just have to play with math nodes and curves until you get a result you are happy with. I'm also using a noise texture to create the random jagged edges between different textures. Now, in Godot I've created a much simpler visual shader that takes the mapping texture that I baked in Blender and uses it to map textures back to the terrain. <laughs> 
Black pixels on the texture represent grass, red is the riverbed, green is the mountains, and blue is the snowy peaks. I could use the alpha channel for a fourth texture, but that makes it harder to see it if I want to modify it in GIMP or Photoshop. So I could just use a second mapping texture instead and have three or four more textures. Now back in Blender, I have another useful tip. Let's say you have a really big map like this, but you have a main area or two where the player will spend most of their time and you want a lot of detail. Notice the area around the tower has much more geometry than the rest of the map. Well let me introduce you to the dynamic topology mode. This allows you to easily apply more detail to a specific part of the map. For example, here I want to add detail to this cliff. But once I do that, as you can see, the dynamic topology mode breaks my UVs wherever I've applied it. But that is no problem because I have been very careful to only sculpt in the vertical direction. Most brushes have this feature. So I can switch to top down view and press U. Then select project from view and I have nice uniform UVs again. This wouldn't work if I had overhanging cliffs or something like that. I make sure that my brush is set to Z plane before I use it. A regular UV unwrap would arguably work better and it would allow overhanging cliffs, but I think for terrain it's messy and a bad practice. If you want caves, steep cliffs, or anything that causes overlapping vertices from top down then I think it would be better to use separate meshes rather than warp your terrain mesh too much. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and I hope you found something useful in this video.